ABC DVD. Two Brothers Alphabetic Journey through a DVD collection with a few tens, a lot of eights, and a couple of twos. Yeah, I'm Josh. I'm Noah. And I would kind of put this in the couple of twos. Yeah, personally. this is ten, but it definitely doesn't rank ten in my world. It is a 1979 movie, and it it is a product of its time. I, I, I can't say it's a bad movie, but it is definitely not a movie for us. Well... I remember our mom showing to us, I mean, obviously, when we were a lot older, because there's a <laughs> lot of stuff going on here. But our mom like, liked to show us things we weren't supposed to watch, apparently. No. But it's like, I had the reoccurring feeling as a child, as I do as an adult, of, God, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into that. And if you're a boomer listening to us, sorry? Sorry? Yeah, there may be a nostalgia feeling well, for these, I, but... I really think it is a product of its time. And if you were of the right age, either... Boomer or slightly older. This Early probably... Xers? No, no, no. It'd be even older than Boomer, I think. Uh, like Silent Generation or Grace Generation. Because we're talking about like the people who feel old during the when the baby boomers were oh. like... Well, I would say that an Xer could have watched this in the theater. I mean, yes. They would have been really young. 79? I guess you're right. They, they would have been <laughs> teenager. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Well, as we go over our generational gaps here. Uh, uh, so, yes, this came out in October 5th, 1979. Yeah. It was written and directed by Blake Edwards, who mm -hmm. is known for the Pink Panthers, mm -hmm. which are a better which movie. Which are a better movie. Yeah. Uh, Victor Victoria yeah, and Peter Gunn, which I guess is a made for TV movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it starred Dudley Moore. Who oh, I only know from like cartoons making fun of him. Yes, I've got a lot of bunch of coconuts. <laughs> uh, he's known for Arthur, which I feel like is all his characters yes. knowing Arthur. Well, I mean, Arthur's the more drunken version of this character. Which is saying something. Yeah, it is saying something. Uh, he's also in The Hound of Baskerville and Bedazzled, the 67 version, not the Brendan Fraser version. I like the Brendan Fraser version. I like Brendan Fraser. Who doesn't love Brendan uh, We have Julie Andrews, so Josh gets to play, you know, I'm a big star. What did IMDb put on my okay, top list? Um, Julian. Mary Poppins, yep. Sound of Music. Uh huh. I don't know what the third one would be. For. Uh, what did they do? Princess Diaries. That what? That was number four. I'll give it to you. It's okay. also Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria. That's fair. Uh, I, I was just curious of what IMDb would put. It know. did put Princess Diaries. I felt bad adding that to her repertoire. You know, it's not that bad of a movie. I'm not saying it is, but you know, <laughs> but it's not that great either. Uh, and introducing Bo Derek. Oh, Bo. Who is known for Bolero, Ghost Can't Do It, and Tommy Boy. Yeah, I know Tommy Boy. I know Tommy Boy. Yeah, there's, there's two Tommy Boy actors yeah, in this. I'll yeah, talk about that later. Yes, the other one, Brian Denny. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, it, you know, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate this. It, it, it cost $74.8 million to make. It made $74.8 million. They so. went Dutch on that, so... But yes, a Hollywood composer goes through a midlife crisis and becomes infatuated with a newly married woman. Yep. That is the movie. That is the movie. Goodbye! Bye! That's all you need to know. Hope you enjoyed it. But yeah, this... Yep. This, I mean, I, I, I was thinking about the whole time, like, mm. you know, if you change the music, mm. this would be a really creepy drama. Oh, it would be. Or I mean, a it, horror film. You know, like that stalkery mentality of oh he's going to go he's going to go off the edge or well, something. Well, we had just recently watched Halloween. Yes, that's true. It's like what is really separating Halloween and this is like this guy's following a younger woman around yeah. his town. Yep. I guess murder. Murder. I guess he, I didn't murder. he didn't murder. Didn't murder him. But yeah, no we get uh you know the intro, he's led into a dark house. There's a surprise party and George is that kind of miserable SOB that people are like, oh, we're going to throw you a party and you are just going to be awful. Yeah, he hates being 42. Yeah. You know, and and it's that, oh, come on, it's it's not that old. It's You're, you're doing fine. You're, you're highly successful. Yeah. You have this great girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You have all these friends and you're well known. Why are you being a sad sack? It's because he's not young and hot. I guess. But yeah. I mean, he's yes, he's a music man. You know, he composes yeah. music. He's talented. Yeah. He's got a very nice car with a very nice eight track. Yes. But oh, I mean, I yeah, he's driving track. around town and he's oogling the women. Yeah. And, you know, he gets a look of Bo Derek on yeah. her way to her, well, on to her wedding. wedding. Yeah. And his first thought is, I should follow this yeah. person. Um, and this is, uh, I guess, the... Um, there's like a literary term, like pathetic fallacy, where like uh, nature kind of mimics someone's emotions. This would be more of um, where the pathos of the character causes his own downfall. And whenever uh, Dudley Moore does something to 
follow his obsession mm -hmm. with being younger, yeah. bad things happen to him. Gotcha. So this is the first example of he decides to follow Bo Derek to her wedding and then runs into a police car. Yeah, and they are very nice to him. Because well, he's a short white guy. He's a short, low British white guy he's in LA. Kid, you know, but it's like he has no registration, he has an expired license, and he ran into them, and he gets to drive away. It's like, it's like yeah, it's gonna be expensive, and he might have to go to court, but it's fine. But, uh, but then he doubles down, and he sneaks into the wedding, yeah. and, you know, gets stung by a, a bee. bee while trying to spy and I mean, on them, yeah. And this is where I come back to, it's like, uh, do you know who Deadly Moore reminds me of? No. He is Mr. Bean's drunken uncle. Oh, God, that is an app where Mr. Bean is charming and lovable. And doesn't yeah, say and he gets Deadly Moore just keeps talking. He's and... talking and bumbling. It's like, but it's like, I feel like they are related. And mm -hmm. Mr. Bean's like, oh, oh, this, this yeah. is what my uncle's like. I'm not going to be like him. Yeah, no, I'm going to be a good person. You know? But it's like, yes, this is Mr. Bean's drunken uncle getting into shenanigans. It's like, yeah. the, the jokes I could see at the time might have worked, but they yeah. just are like, I well, mean, that's weird. He got stung by a bee it's, and it's, cursed. It's, it's this weird slapstick and awkward situational humor, which did not land for me. It might have landed. I mean, I guess it landed for our mom because she liked this movie. Um, but that is that is the majority of this film's humor. Mm -hmm. And and we, I guess I could talk about it, that this is the equivalent of a sex comedy of the time. Yeah, so like your um, yeah. your I mean the closest, American American pie. pie, but that's a teenage sex comedy and that's where where this gets a little weird because it's also a mid -age, mid age crisis movie. What is, what's the Jack Nicholson? Uh, uh as good as it gets. Yeah, that would I mean that didn't have as much sex for comedy, but it's it's an equivalent of it's a comedy about mid age and finding relationships of so, your age of instead your, of going yeah. after the younger woman. Yeah. But yeah, uh, but we, we flash forward. Well, just a quick, you know, Easter egg because mm. I, I was curious of his license plate uh, was a, ha, had these weird letters on it. What does that stand for? Oh, he got it because he's part of the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. So, of course, he made that his license plate. It still exist? I, it probably does. Okay. I mean, there's guilds all over the place. <laughs> there's a guild for everything. Yeah. But yeah, but no, we flash forward to Sam and George at home. Yeah. You know, here comes one of the running gags is he likes to spy on his neighbors mm. who are like a voyeuristic yeah they they have sex parties they they they're, they're the 1970s uh released sexual yeah. revolution of we're going to we like that you watch mm -hmm. you know? and then i mean i guess it is a a cute joke they spy back on him yeah. and it's it just <laughs> you know it's it's cute but they definitely run long yeah. the tooth on this joke yeah. but the, you know, basically, they make a meal out of, like, that this relationship is really mm -hmm. fraught. Like, you know, they they talk for, like, ten minutes about, like, what is the definition of a broad? So, yeah. So, Julie Andrews uh, is kind of this voice of reason, mm -hmm. but is, like, at the time, is slut-shaming uh, the women that he's spying on. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this argument of what is a broad, what is a woman, how would you describe me? And then kind of just, like makes her want to leave. Mm -hmm. It's showing that they're, she wants to have sex and he's just wanting to argue. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, it, it really goes back to like, he is just miserable yeah. to be around. And they're just, you know, as I wrote, because I need some kind of pun in my life, uh, they were talking about broads in the broad term. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, but I needed something while watching this. Yeah, so, I mean, she basically walks out, you know, it's like, I appreciate Julie, Julia more, um, Julie Andrews, you mean? Julie Andrews. Yeah. Oh, Julianne Moore. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, basically, just puts her trench coats on yeah. and, and walks out. I'm, I'm done, like, yeah. I'm done. And we, you know, and at this point, we didn't know that they were married or not. And this is where we learned that they are not married. Yeah, they're, they're just seeing each other. They're just seeing each other. Yeah. But we find out that Sam is an actress, yeah. a singer, which yeah. you know, true to life. Yeah. Um, and and we, we get like, a. Yeah. A very dated <laughs> reference of kind to call each other and getting the yeah. busy signal. Yeah, this is 1970s shenanigans that would not work for now of like, oh, yeah, you can't call each other at the same time. But it shows that they are still in each other's minds. Yeah, they're trying to do it. Uh, um, this is, uh, uh, we kind of skipped over it of his friend Hugh. Yeah. Uh, he kind of made an offhand reference of that he wanted to have his friend George Dudley Moore analyzed, but he might, you know, turn out gay and he couldn't do that to uh, Julie Andrews. I went, well, that's an odd line, but it is the 1970s. Then we learn out that Robert Weber, who plays Hugh, is actually a gay man. Mm -hmm. And I do actually like this character because it's not that stereotypical, flaming homosexual that the 1970s, 1980s would play. He's like, no, he's just a normal guy, yeah. just who happens to be gay. But then we get this uncomfortable 
homophobia from Dudley Moore of their interplay yeah. of just saying some awful things to each other. That does not age well. It does not age well, but it is a product of its time, and that was something a gay man in the, in the 1970s would have had to deal with. Mm-hmm, but, you know, mm. they, they do have a banter that yeah. I guess does play in some yeah. parts, but we also have a very short interlude of uh, George at his shrink's office. And we get the, the, the title. Yeah, it's like, it was like well, what would you rank her? Well, she's an 11. I don't, yeah, when I'm 10, she's 11. Yeah. I don't know if this is the origin of ranking women by number, but it probably did help it into the zeitgeist. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that we, still lives to today. We 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 yeah. definitely have a later on with the Bo Derek scene on the, um, the beach that definitely you know is like she's a ten kind of thing yeah, that, yeah. That, that that all the posters made it big deal. Yeah. So I have no doubt that this injected you know yeah. ranking and she's a ten into mm-hmm. the zeitgeist. Yeah, but we definitely get the the you know. On the nose, like you're obsessed with your age, you're in a midlife crisis. Mm-hmm. La 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 yeah, la you la. Want the young woman, but you don't like that you're the old man. And he goes to he starts his uh, fishing for information by going back to the chapel to talk to the preacher mm-hmm. who who recognizes him and wants to play music for him. Yeah, which <laughs> is a very yeah. long scene. Yeah. And it's like there's the old lady gag, which yeah. I, <laughs> you know. <laughs> my, my my only guess. For this one, because it's supposed to be funny and to have a fart joke at the end, yeah, uh, is to show he is actively having to walk around an old woman, a symbol of age, to try to pursue this thing of youth while trying to pretend to be a good person to the preacher. So it's, <laughs> it's this literal person in the room that's, you know, the embodiment of his problem. It's the deep head of meaning, so we can have a fart joke. That's, I, <laughs> I, it might not be. I think it's just, it just might be a feeble old woman so far but that might be the best i can go for this, this no scene. i mean it's it's you yeah. it, it's a very long scene so he can get a name yeah um to yeah. then go know, back to his go house. back to his house and fall down the hill yeah he he, he inadvertently get, ha, has his telescope hit his head very lightly mm-hmm. and then he slowly goes to the bushes like yeah he's got to fall down he's got to fall behind the bushes but there's no reason he should stop walking he's he wasn't hit that hard and it's like, oh, he fell down the hill. And then we this have is, all... this is just for here for to make me laugh, and it didn't work. Yeah, it's like trying to get up the hill, so he yeah. misses the phone call. And, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, this, oh. th- this is the. Cl- I mean, I I don't know if it was uh, tired at this point, but it has become tired in uh, rom coms and and these type of movies nowadays of just the missed conversations and just not talking to each other. That's what this is playing off of, right? Um, that that misunderstandings and not comp- talking to each other and just missed opportunities are what driving this uh, relationship between Julie Andrews and Dudley Moore. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so he, he got a name. He got yeah. a dentist's name. Yeah. He goes in to, t- you know, to meet with him and the dentist doing his job yeah. says, oh, you got six cavities, buddy. Again, like he's he's doing, he's following his obsession. So the universe is going to punish him. And then this time it's six cavity fillings. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, uh, which... Yeah. I mean, there there are these little yeah. moments. I mean, which on the surface could yeah. be cute because he has to go get fill a prescription yeah. and he no one understands yeah. him and he drools yeah. on himself yeah. and it's like it's just these moments that I guess progress the story. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's that the joke of like, oh, why do the tenants want to talk to you when you can't even talk because they have their fingers in their mouth? Mm-hmm. But that joke goes way too long, and then having to deal with the. The, the Nova Cane, that joke goes go, goes on too long. Yeah, but well, he gets home, he's drinking pills, or drinking, he's, drinking alcohol, uh, well, taking which, pills. Which is never advised. Never advised, and the police get called on yeah. him, and he has to have this whole, yeah. you know, drop-down scene with the police. And it's like, yeah. you know, I'm impressed that they actually let him, you know. Again, it's the 70s, and he's a short white British guy. I don't think he's a threat. <laughs> yeah. But they let him write down, and yeah. they're like, oh, well, you should lie down. Which immediately he, he, he goes to his car. He goes into the car, and he starts driving, and it kind of looked like, Julie Andrews was coming to him and he was driving away. It's like, oh my God, he's going to hit Julie Andrews. But no, he goes to the neighbor's house and they welcome him in because they think they have this like interchange. So he gets to be part of the sex party now. Yeah, and he's walking around naked and, you know. Of course, Julie Andrews is going to look through the telescope that she hates. Yeah, and she catches him and they have this moment of, oh, "Oh, you. you." (sighs) So then we we get, it's like, well, he screwed up. So what does he do? He goes to bed. Mexico. Yeah. And I was like, I love that the dentist told, you know, because the dentist is the father of Bo Derek, of uh, that, oh, my daughter went down to Mexico for a honeymoon. And so somehow he chose the right one to go to. In the suspenders of disbelief, I'm yeah. just going to allow it so the just, movie just keeps going. I don't want another scene of him trying to figure out where she is. Yeah. 
but again, the plane ride is terrible because again, he's a he's doing the wrong thing. But he gets to Mexico, he's still drunk. Yes. You know, the the drive in. I, I it's like the whole time I am like, God, I feel bad for these employees having to deal with <laughs> George and how awful drunk yeah. he is. Yeah. And then we get to see uh Bo Derek again, and uh she's got that, you know, Mexican uh vacation cornrows that uh, mm-hmm. people get. And apparently this took like hours and hours to get right for her hair, and then they had to use Elmer's glue so it would just stay down right. Oh, gee. It's like, ew. But, I mean, not ew, and like, oh, that's gross, but it's just like, oh, oh you had just, to deal with you it. You had to deal with that. It's like, ah, oh, like, that, that was probably not fun. But yeah, this is where the rest of the movie kind of yeah. takes place, is in yeah. Mexico, is um, mm-hmm. Sam meets a bartender pl- played by Brian Dennehy, Brian. who is the father in Tommy Boy, yep. who marries the yep. conniving and stepmom, uh, Bo, Bo Derek. Derek. Yes. There's your connection. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I like... The bartender character. No, no, Out of all the characters in this movie, mm-hmm. he's enjoyable because he's playing it straight. Like, I'm a bartender, buddy. I'm going to let you drink. I'm going to let you wine. Yeah. I'm going to be your therapist mm-hmm. and your buddy. All It's like, yeah. it, the character works for yeah, me. Yeah, I'm not going to judge, but I'm going to listen to you and you know give you the, the bartenderly advice versus the therapistly but advice. But yeah, but there's a lot of whining yes. to the bartender. Like, woe is me. Yeah. I mean, I, I quite enjoy, because there's always these generational divides of of problems of, oh, these young people today. I loved hearing him piss off about the Beatles being a lame song to mm-hmm. hear in the future. And I went, yeah, that is a song that people played that ended up on commercials, ended up in mm-hmm. the elevators. Our music is doing that now. I mean, it is it, there's no escape from the passage of time. Yep. Sorry, buddy. But we have a, a you know a introduction of Mary Louise. Yes, uh, who I recognize as the mom from ET. Oh, okay. Yeah, and George can't perform. You yeah. know, brings her back. And yeah. It's like this this kind of like heartbreaking yeah. scene that they just really let float yeah, by. Yeah, like, her, like, she, her life sucks. Yeah, we know it's because George is having a hard time in his life, but she is blaming herself because this has happened to her before, so she doesn't feel beautiful, she doesn't feel young or, or wanted, and there's no kind of payoff for her. No, I mean, if it was like a modern day movie, yeah. it's like, I feel like there'd be a scene where she like tries to kill herself. Or something like that, or... or so, or she ends up with the bartender or something, some kind of resolution. But all we get is she gets to see him dance with Bo Derek. And well, and she's in the background yeah, kind yeah. of also because yeah. we get the hot sand beach yeah, which scene. goes on too long. But, you know, oh, uh, it's just yeah. like, you know, I, 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 the first thing I wrote was like, why is he wearing sweats? I know. You know well, like, he didn't pack properly. He, uh, well, it was clearly, quick, yeah. but it's just like, why are you wearing sweats? Yeah. Uh, I, I, we just passed uh, a quick scene that just actually did make me laugh is uh when he's at the bar he calls julie andrews and her son josh answers ah well i'll I'll point this out his name is not josh oh it's not no well it is at the end of the movie but at this point his name is george okay this is a a mistake that i noticed okay when he calls he goes hi george it's george so the kid's name is george at the end of the movie, I think George me, changes to Josh. Okay, I think because I heard Josh at this point. No, no, it's George. Okay, because it, uh, it, it's like he makes a big thing. It's like, hi, George. It's George. Yeah, right. like that's a cute little joke we have. Okay, and for s- some reason, and I don't know why they did it. Yeah. At the end of the movie, it's Josh. Because I wrote down my notes that it was Josh, but because uh, of of uh, just piss off George made me laugh. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like I, I, I'm pretty sure it's yeah. George, okay. and for some reason, it's Josh at okay. the end. So we'll um, look it up by the end of the show. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure IMDb has it, but was it like he said hi, George, and then George says hi, it's George, like he's drunkenly telling it, it's, it's me. I really feel like they they okay. call, the, I mean, the sex name is George. I mean, this is not a big deal. It's just like Josh is wearing the typical 1970s, watching Saturday Night Fever. It's like God. I know I look the same way, probably my Jinko jeans or something like that. But, uh, but piss off, George made me laugh. But yeah, uh, the the beach stuff is probably one of the few moments I remembered of this scene of him wanting to go surfing, and you're seeing Bo Derek's husband asleep in the background, and showing how dangerous that is, and um, he is still trying to get closer and closer to her, but not trying to come off as creepy even though he is Mm -hmm. and he's punished for for and sent to the ocean with the other creepy men the creepy old men sitting out there in the ocean with their their drinks but yeah it's just like it 
it, it very much like we're, we're bemoaning the point of like these yeah. scenes just go on mm-hmm. and on like like oh and cut yes and cut, cut. no but uh, he eventually does the right thing and uh, gets a sailing boat to go to go save uh, Bo Derek's husband and um, because and again this I, I I know I'm like latching onto the one deeper hitting meme but when he does do something right mm-hmm. the universe does right things for him so he gets a television interview that not only does his friend Hugh see but uh, Samantha you know uh, Julie Andrews gets to see so it shows him as a good person again. Well, I had to laugh like man international news must have been light in '79 we have this made the, well, the news an, back an, an Oscar winner helped a man see. yeah it's it's in the you know one of those tastes of life you know days of the life kind of thing. I mean, there. I I also have to laugh, and I think you had said yeah. it's like it's like what's with the shark? I know they're they're the yeah, other to add some extra peril. There was like a very obviously fake shark fin, at, you know, just to you know seem like they're about to be attacked. And the only thing I could think of was Jaws was not that long ago. Maybe that's you know still in the the zeitgeist, the, zeitgeist, the public memory of hey, let's just add a, add a shark and add some add some peril. But yeah, no, but he he does good. He you know is everyone's good graces. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of his in with uh, Bo Derek. Yeah, you know, and he basically you know ends up at her room. Yeah, and she's naked. You know, in a in a towel for, out of the shower, and uh, she wanted to see him, and um, so they decide to go on a date. Yeah, and you, you get the, the the whole day thing. You know, they they go to dinner mm. and there's banter mm. and they walk on the beach and they go back to her room. And, and this dancing. is something I did appreciate because I feel like if this was like a ninety sex comedy of a similar thing, vein, mm-hmm. that they would be making Bo Derek vapid and dumb. No, and, yeah, and, and just to kind of highlight that he is a mature man and that though he loves her beauty, what he really wants is someone on his level like Julie Andrews. But in this case, Bo Derek actually speaks Spanish, uh, loves many types of music, including the classicals that he loves, mm-hmm. and can hold a conversation. Well, and but, she obviously, yeah. you know, is into him, and she's yeah. very she's very assertive, which yeah. is good because sometimes it's like it, mm-hmm. it puts him off. Yeah, uh, off his you know game because yeah. he there's a lot of stumbling and mm-hmm. he's obviously uncomfortable at moments. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we get this uh, you know this talk about the di- different types of music and and she says oh with the classical music she likes to have sex because of how she learned from her step uncle who taught her that. Yeah, it's kind of it's like oh that was just tossed in here, but okay, it's but like, that was creepy. But then he he finally gets what he's always wanted to sleep with her. Yeah, and it's painful. It's it's awkward. awkward. I it's, mean, it, to me, I wrote down this was probably the funniest scene yes. of the whole movie. But it does kind of show like the fantasy versus reality yeah. is not living up to what he wanted. Yeah, and, and and we get this kind of this discussion of why me, and she's like, I I can sleep with who I want. I can be who I want. And this kind of circles back to the Julie Andrews argument of what's abroad and what's not of she's not dumb, but she is of a different generation. Yeah, and views sex of, and relationships in a very different way. Different way versus what he wanted, where he thought she was special and he thought he would be special to her. But I love this, like, well, how could you sleep around on someone you care about? You just married when, though he's not married to Julie Andrews, this is kind of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And it's that, oh... Well, and he definitely has, like, you know, an old man moment yeah, of, like, yeah. I don't understand you kids, kids today. today. And how, how could you do that? Yeah, yeah, it is kind of like a, a yeah. slinking out moment yeah. uh, to kind of go back to Sam. And, you know, Hugh said that, you know, this is uh, when Hugh and Sam had their conversation of he's going through his midlife crisis and he will come crawling back. Mm-hmm. But, and this, but this movie never really shows the crawling back. It's a, it's a it's it's like it's a it's a tepid crawling back because he comes back and, and you know uh, Sam is going on a date with, with someone, someone else, and he yeah. kind of has to just accept it yeah. but and he does but there is no gro- there, not, there's no, no groveling there's no apology there's nothing he just goes home plays his piano and then Sam shows up and they start singing together and, and he gives the, the worst, worst proposal yeah. ever not like I've been an idiot. I was trying to chase my youth when in reality I am happy where I am. I mm-hmm. am happy with you. We don't get that just, hey, why don't we get married? And he's like, no. No, maybe I'll think about it. So we'll we, have coffee. We, we argue more than we have sex. It's like, we can change that. It's like, but really, are you? I mean, are, at this point, it's like, there is no yeah. change. It's like, it's like 
No, he, he his yeah. his conquest failed. Yeah. I don't see him changing. Yeah. You know, yes, you get the cute, like, oh, I'm putting the classical music well, on because I learned something. Yeah, we get the, the neighbor, the payoff, I guess, of the neighbor telescope thing of the neighbor was actively trying to show him sexy things so that they would also engage and yeah. maybe have a back and forth competition. But it's like, no, we're showing him X-rated movies and all I get is PG. <laughs> Which and is it's like, we're going to do it in the dark. And then, and, which is another... I remember this ending too. That's like the only two things I remember of these movies, mm -hmm. of this movie. And then he puts on the classical music that he was going to have sex with Bo Derek on and starts undressing Julie Andrews and going, no, no, I don't want to see Mary Poppins naked. Please don't do this to me. And luckily we don't. But. Yeah, when they go down, it's like, I swear she hits her head on the piano. I'm like, oh, geez, geez, be, be careful with her. She's a national treasure. Yes. But yeah, and it's like, it ends on just this kind of like, Huh. Uh, I mean, you, you gotta assume that they're going to have a more intimate, more emotional relationship, and and that he's gone past this block. But I just go, but he's so insufferable. Mm -hmm. He's I, what, what, I, there, there, scene between Bo Derek and um, uh, and uh, her the the, fr the friend Hugh yeah. on the beach where they said. Oh, why do I even love this man? It's like, oh, because he's sweet. He's smart. He's like, I don't see that in this movie. But when they talk about his faults, I see all those. Yeah, and it's like one of those, like, I, I guess there's something charming about him. But it's like, it, yeah. it is one of those things where mm. the movie says, like, oh, everyone wants this person. You're kind of going, yeah, but why? why? Yeah, I mean, beyond like, that he's famous and, and successful. Rich, slightly rich, you know, it's, but why? Yeah, yeah, there's like this, like, I don't. I don't get it, but it's like, okay, movie. But I guess if you had been growing, like I said, if you were a product of that time and you had seen many more Dudley, Dudley Moore movies mm -hmm. and you knew that this was a, a, a trope of his films or something like that, then you would be expecting that and, and you kind of accept it as you go along. But for me, the, the jokes don't age. They don't age well. They don't age well. I, and I, I would be curious of a teenager now watching... American Pie or something's uh, got to give or something like that. You'd be like, oh, is this super dated and, and, and now? This is super dated and this isn't funny or mm -hmm. something like that. No. And I would totally accept that. Yeah. And I think the most that I think you can get out of this movie is the yeah. famous Bo Derek scene running on the, the beach, beach, which also might be dated because that was highlighted by Wayne's World yeah. and a lot of those Saturday Night Lives of, no, 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 this is a poster girl yeah. that you know was in everyone's bedroom yeah, growing and I, up I, I, and that's probably the slow motion run of the beach was yo taken by Baywatch so it's not mm -hmm. like even unique and uh, she uh, Bo Derek said she uh, felt she got it on the first take but the director still made her do it a whole bunch of times mm, yeah. I don't want to even do that yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, like, I, I even wanted to see if, like, there was an earlier example of, like, what this, the people going to this movie would have said about an earlier movie. And the only one I could think of was, like, The Seven Year Itch with uh, Marilyn Monroe. But that's not really a sex comedy. That's just, like, that's just a comedy of relationships and getting older. But, mm -hmm. again, the, the movie code wouldn't have allowed this type of movie. Yeah. But it's, like, there, every now and then this type of, type of, getting old and getting tired of your lot in life will pop up. And I guess it's just for that generation. Yeah, it just works in that moment in mm -hmm. time. And I mean, I I had kind of hoped going into this, like, oh, yeah. I'm watching it as an adult. Maybe the joke Well, because we're now at the age that this should uh, should appeal to. Appeal to and it's like, and, and it man, doesn't. it doesn't. And it's like, I don't, I mean, <laughs> I like I said, I really just wanted to go watch Mr. Bean instead of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And yeah, I, I, I think I took it from our parents' uh, collection. Collection because I knew it was a classic film. Yeah. But I don't think I'm ever going to watch it again. I can't suggest it to anyone except no. maybe who someone people who, of of that generation. But they probably have already seen it. So I don't or know if someone's they're... like, "Hey, yeah. I've seen this scene. What's this about?" And like, like, and, and, I'll explain it. But there, I think this falls into the trap of a lot of movies from the late '70s and '80s, where yeah. there are iconic scenes mm -hmm. that everyone knows. But the movie does not hold up to that iconic scene. I'm yeah. thinking Flashdance. Yeah. I'm thinking um, oh, there's, Working there's, Girl. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking... Yeah, there's lots. There's, there's a lot of them where like you know these scenes, but then when you watch the movie to get the full picture, you're like, oh. That's all you had, yeah. The, the scene really is the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's this one, too. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is part of film history. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know... 
Hopefully you watched it. Maybe not. Or you yeah. just took our synopsis and you'll just agree yeah, with just what we said. Say, um, you know, please take our survey. Cause yes, survey this, this is still is, up. This is our, literally our last episode of the season. Yes, uh, we will be coming back in season two. You yeah. know, it, absent of, absence of malice. Yes. Um, unless you all say something in your We're critique serving, and yeah. we change it. But for the time being, it is absence of malice yeah, in so, season two. Yeah, so we'll probably take a little break so we can get your guys' information and then we will come back. Yep. So we will see you in season two. Bye. 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 I don't know the alphabet. I'm only an English major. Well, an English major who also can't count. Well, an English major doesn't have to count. <laughs> what about Roman numerals? Well, that's just numerals. I's and V's and C's. <laughs> yeah. What does that have to do with an English major? Well, it's Latin based. It's well, actually a Germanic and Latin and English is just like a whole bunch of languages that got mugged and are hiding in a trench coat. <laughs> like two kids trying to get yeah, into a yeah. radar movie? Yeah. <laughs>